Welcome to Cloud Realities Live, a conversation show exploring the practical and exciting alternate realities that can be unleashed through cloud-driven transformation. I'm Dave Chapman. I'm Shao Kajal. And I'm Rob Kernahan. And we are still here on reInvent. It is day one still. We are in the expo area, which, you know, I think I've said on previous years of the show, the expo to me just feels like a microcosm of the environment, the microcosm of the cloud market. And I find it's particularly vibrant this year. It is very lively this year. Yeah. And swag's a lot easier to come by as well. No. Yeah. Little spinny wheels everywhere. Spin the wheel, uh, win a prize. So, Rob, the, the thing I was going to ask you about the swag. So, Rob forgot his mouse. So, another another, another little bit about the prepared traveller. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Rob has managed to come away without his mouse and that's really thrown him and he was like very confidently walking in this morning going right I'm going to go and track a mouse down in a swag how's that hunt going Rob? It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's not gone so well so I've ended up with a chocolate bar a Lego set several notebooks refused 10 <laughs> pairs of socks and all sorts but no mouse chapsticks as well we've got some chapsticks good, there I've, you go which I, working good for the peak Nevada. swag the chapstick <laughs> I'm going to say peak swag but I thought you were setting your your sights a little high on a mouse, I have to say. I think I have literally trolled every stall on the expo floor. Yeah. Nothing. No. A drone, fine. maybe? Or a, a, a speaker system? A toolbox was over on the other side. Right, right, right. No mice. No. None. Well, well, we'll keep track of that over the next couple of days, <laughs> yeah. shall we? <laughs> See if I succumb. Yeah. But I am, uh, so today, we're we going to talk about... Um, something a little different like a, a little different take on on aws we're actually going to talk about a specific region of the world and what aws is doing in that region of the world and how some of the challenges of that region may be slightly different to some of the bigger global challenges we normally talk about and one of the themes i think that will come out of the uh, amir conversation is going to be around sovereignty which is also a theme of the conference this time around i am delighted to say that joining us is tanuja randry the vp of EMEA for aws Tanuja, thank you so much for fitting us into your busy schedule. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be joining this, actually, Cloud Realities podcast. Yeah. Well, it's um, amazing to see you. Thank you so much again. Um, just tell everybody a little bit about your day job. Hmm. Nice question. Hmm. Well, look, I, I, I run our business across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and I think what that means is I have the privilege of having a super diverse team. Right. Um, one day you're in the UK in London, which is where I live, mm. and another day you're transported into Cape Town, and another day in the UAE, and you're meeting customers from around all of these regions, which have, you know, very different challenges and opportunities. You know, some that are way ahead on adoption, others that are behind. So, you know, the day job is really about setting the strategy for our region. You know, how are we going to help our customers? embrace technology and really be able to innovate, drive productivity, growth, building teams, you know, building the right teams, building diverse teams and inclusive teams, um, making sure I spend personally a lot of time with customers. I try and right. do right. at least 60% of my time actually with customers and partners, working with partners like you yeah. because we can't do the things we do without you. And then, of course, spending a lot of time on my talent development, right? I mean, learning, development, hiring. We spend a lot of time in Amazon on uh, people. Right, right. And so there's all of that. And then all that comes with running a region, which is, you know, the buck stops here, right? So it's inspection and, you know, KPIs and, you know, delivering results, as we say. So right. I think it's uh, summarized, I'd say it's a big combination of think big, deliver results, and then strive to be its best employer well, all combined in one well fantastic i am looking forward to digging into that in a second and, and just getting a bit of an insight into that into that region and the challenges before that though how's vegas going so far for you so buzzy this yeah. is my third reinvent i was going to ask exactly uh, that and you know the first one was smaller because obviously it was just after covid yeah um i remember going away thinking oh it's quite nice you don't have to rush through the crowds yeah. but yeah, yeah. actually it's so buzzy now you know and we're sitting as you say in the expo and it's fabulous to be surrounded by the ecosystem of partners that actually make it happen i i couldn't agree more yeah i, I like i was saying earlier that to me you get a real sense of what's going on on the cloud market literally just by walking around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I sort of love the I love the effort organisations put into sort of you know kind of showing up, showing up in terms of their brand and their product, 
and and the sort of conversation you can have with them is like pretty unique i think well it's not maybe it's not unique you know there are other expos elsewhere but i think in terms of like scale and like that sense of microcosm it's it's pretty amazing i'll tell you what i spotted this year was an awful lot more creativity Mm. with what's going on there's a lot more fun involved in as you go and engage with the partner network which is quite good it's true because i pop by the databricks uh base and they have this generative ai photo booth right um you know you've got the whiz team with their lovely pink socks which i love um Mm. but yeah you're right i love the way it's organized here because you have data zones security zones you know it is a learning conference, right? Which is yeah. what I like. You can go to a lot of other expos. But I think here, people are all about learning. Yeah. Um, and so it's quite nice that you have these little um, stand-ups where people are actually talking about their products and what they're doing. Yeah, fabulous. Very buzzing. And I did get to, for the first time in my time coming to Las Vegas, go to Sector Soleil. Oh, oh, did you? Wow, Which one did yeah, you say? Cool. Which one did you say? Um, I guess it's the main show. Right, right. With the water. It's oh, amazing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I don't know what, aqua or something like that? Yeah, I think so. And I, I, I literally was the uh, night I landed. Oh, yes. Oh, it's called. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're a colleague in the background is like doing excellent hand signal work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was good. Did it, did it live up to your expectations? Oh, it was very, very good. And even though I was highly jet lagged landing in, yeah, it was yeah. worth it. Totally worth doing. I saw the uh, the Beatles one uh, last year, I think. Good. You know, the one that was at the Mirage. Yeah, amazing. Like, I, I mean, I, I was going through a Beatles phase at the time because of that Get Back film. So it was like right in my sweet spot. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely. And the spheres. Oh, my God. Uh, it's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? I think only in, in Las Vegas really could great. you have yeah. something like that. Right, right. Have you been in it yet? No, no, but wow, I can Dave. see it from my bedroom you, window. Right, That's good for you right. as well. Right. You would have seen it from your huh? bedroom window as well, right? Yeah. Every we should I, we should every, every time I see it, I can't I can't help point it at pointing goes, it out. Ooh, there's and a like, now everyone everyone is like you know has noticed how often I point it out. <laughs> so you know I've tried to stop doing that now. But yeah, we're going on Friday, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Oh, yeah. fantastic! Anyhow, let's roll on uh, into the main subject matter of today's conversation, which is uh, which is the EMEA business in AWS and the EMEA region and the challenges of that. Um, I, get, I guess, first of all, to sort of try to connect it to the conference conversation, from your day job, which, which you did a great job of explaining to us a second ago, what were you coming to the conference particularly interested in? Like, what, what was standing out for you? Yeah, look, I think um, the main reason really for coming here, as I said before, is it's a learning conference. So, I mean, I just find when I'm here for the few days that we are, the amount you pick up in terms of just what's going on in the world Mm. of, you know, our customers, our partners, the technology evolution. It's also a great place to meet a lot of my Amazonian colleagues who I don't see all the time. So, you know, bumping into Regine today, who's just joined us as CMO or... You know, bumping into Kathy along, you know, bump. Yeah, it's just fabulous. You just bump into people. Um, and it's nice. You just get a chance to connect and share stories yeah. with each other. Um, I hosted a women in leadership lunch, which I do every year. Okay, fantastic. I love that. I mean, yeah. three, four hundred amazing, inspiring women. Um, Adam came around for it today, which was nice. And fabulous. then I interviewed Deb LeFay, who's the CTO of Starbucks. So that's awesome. Mm. I, you know, we get to spend a lot of time with our customers, you know, which is really good. Um, mm. In this world, um, and introducing them to people around Amazon who have the skills and the capabilities that they look for, right. that's exciting. Um, and then I'm always here to just kind of, what are we going to announce? What are we going to announce? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Surely, <laughs> surely you must get the inside track. It's almost well, like nobody seems to get the inside you track. You only get it literally on the day. So right, it's right. not like, you know, you know way in advance. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Um, Are all the agendas kind of kept in a safe somewhere, like a physical <laughs> safe in advance? I, I think we are very careful about it. Yeah, yeah. Quite yeah. right, too. So let's see. So you did a good job of overviewing your region. But there is, a, you know, Europe is an extremely diverse region. Uh you know, multiple different t- types of country at different levels of development, uh, a, a lot of um, a lot of uh, rules and regulations that that govern certain sections of Europe in particular, which is a particularly complex a particularly complex melting pot of rules and regulations. So, what are the big cloud themes that you're picking up on? in your day job and how is that connecting to some of the conversation that you that we're seeing here and some of the announcements that we're seeing here 
Yeah, no, thank you for the question. Uh, we are an extremely diverse region. Um, I think there's three things that I will say to you that are always the topic of conversation uh, with CEOs that I meet across um, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So it doesn't matter where they are. Mm. I think the biggest topic on their mind right now is how do we get back to growth? Um, you know, there's been a you know huge round, as you know, of cost optimization. Yeah. And yeah. Not necessarily across all segments of customers, but definitely you see it in the startup world and the digital native world. And But um, they are keen to come out of this cycle now, actually rethinking sort of, okay, how do I now go invest my cost optimization into new investments that drive innovation and growth? Right, yeah. And really at the heart of that is how do we create organizations that have the agility um, to really learn and innovate at the edge. Um, and, and, and of course, let's get back to productivity and EMEA is a really big factor. Yeah. So transforming themselves. And we, then, cer we certainly saw, I think, a, a, a big element of that in, uh, in last night's keynote, that the opening keynote. Specifically, I thought, talking about the use of modernization as a way to not only you know, drive co drive cost saving and get cost out of your environment, but actually also to obviously take you on your modernization journey too. And that was I was surprised by that because a lot of you know a lot of other conferences are very much majored on Gen AI, of which there is plenty going plenty. on here as well. Um, but I thought that was a really useful opening tone, you know, because it was very I thought it was it was very sympathetic to and I like, recognized the big conversation that's going on in the world at the moment, which is like you know economic headwinds basically. Yeah, absolutely. And look, I think there are, you know, customers come at it in different ways. There are those who are much more keen to do a lift and shift first yeah, and then modernize. Yeah. There are those who want to modernize and move at the same time. There isn't a right answer, but we all know that if you don't modernize, you don't really get the full no, benefit of, of the capabilities, right? Just moving from one data center to another data center. Yep, there are benefits, yeah. but not necessarily um, the full potential. I think the second big topic, by the way, in EMEA right now is around skills. Mm -hmm. um, the digital skills gap is very, very big and very concerning. You know, only one in three, you know, uh, STEM graduates is female. That's yeah, a big issue. that's absolutely shocking. Yeah. Um, the European um, Union has a very ambitious goal um, around their digital agenda. Mm. We did some research recently with a company called Public First, and there's 2.8 trillion euros to be unlocked by leveraging AI, right. big data, cloud right. technologies. That is right? a number. That is a number. Massive by 2030. However, however, today only about a quarter of companies are really leveraging this technology. Yeah. Well, and it feel it feels at the moment. I think it's still got a sense of proof of concept and you know innovatory feel about it, rather than sort of uh, like big, large scale adoption. And one of the things we've talked about on the show before is this notion of th there's fantastic point solution uses of things like Gen AI. And that's, you know, as, as points of light, that's spreading across a lot of organizations right now, sometimes in a big way, sometimes in a small way. I think it's going to be extremely interesting when people start to join up those points of light to understand what AI transformation of organizations is going to look like. And that seems to be coming at an unbelievable pace, like the speed of conversation to get to that, I think is probably three or four times faster than it took cloud native to get there. Do you have a perspective on that? Yeah, and I, I mean, you know, just to tie it back to the point about skills, I mean, imagine what that's doing to right. the pressure on right. skills yeah, alone, right? right? right, and, right. and to be honest, we can throw a lot of technology at things, but unless we've got the people trained, skilled, to be able to execute on that with and with AI, by the way, and with generative AI, because I yeah. fervently believe it's an augmented strategy yeah, yeah. with generative AI, you're not going to get there. I mean, that's the biggest blocker to transformation. Right, right. Um, I mean, to your point, what I'm now seeing people really lean into is finding what are those needle moving, hmm. high return on investment areas for their businesses. Yeah that they need to absolutely focus on in terms of resourcing to drive benefits from AI right. and generative AI. So not only, and at the core of all of it is getting your data right. Yeah. You yeah. probably heard that right while you're here. Sure. The people that are gonna do much faster and accelerated uh, progress with these new technologies is those who've already unified, mm. modernized, to your point earlier, yeah, yeah. and are now starting to layer on AI. 
Um, they've already done the certifications. They've trained the people. Mm. They've got the skill sets. They've got the partnerships. And now they're going to be able to move at rapid pace, right? Yeah. The others are going to take some time to do all of that first. Right. And or, of course, experimentation. There's going to be massive experimentation. I have no doubt on the fact. What I keep saying to my customers is, you know, a whole bunch of parks are not good enough, right? No, what absolutely. you got to do is stuff that's going to move the needle for your organization, you know, whatever I, that might be. I was, about to, I was about to ask you that exact whatever that might be question. In terms of a lot of the conversations you've had so far with your with very large customers, is it predominantly cost takeout you're seeing at the moment? Or are people managing to attach like revenue increase to it, at the, you know, and, and actual business growth attached to it? I actually think um, that, look, there's a ton of really great productivity improvement yeah. opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. But if you think about what that does, what that does is actually releases time to be creative yeah. and even innovative. So so in fact they they go together. They're not alone. It's not like people are saying, oh my God, I need to take our cars and so I'm going to use generative AI. No, 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 no. Let us figure out a way where we can release time. It and helps with the skills, doesn't it? So the clever people have the right time to do the high value work. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Take the toil out and do the stuff that really matters. And you heard Adam talk about, you know, how we're going to just make it so much simpler for people, right? Yeah. In terms of developers and programmers and increased productivity. If we don't do that, we don't have time to think and innovate, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so I think there's that. There's clearly lots of that. I mean, I was talking to a customer this morning. They put all their emails into LLM and they're able to just be so much smarter about uh, how yeah. they send out emails, for right, example. Right, right. And that's a good productivity solution. Mm. But then you also have somebody like Booking.com and they're leveraging generative AI to rethink how they do recommendations for customers. Yeah, right. That's going to drive more expanded maybe travel uh, yeah, scenarios yeah. and therefore more revenues and more growth. So it really is, and then I'll give you another, I love this one personally, because I happened to be in the UAE and tested it, but Emirates Airlines is using AI and metaverse and geospatial technology to create better cabin crew training experiences, mm. you know, where you can immerse yourself and learn differently. Um, and, you know, put on the goggles, I'm transported into a plane and... Oh, very cool. It was pretty cool, <laughs> right? Cool. So, and then the final point I will say in, in EMEA that's coming up a lot, which you, you will have heard is um, sustainability. I mean, right. that is yeah. massively on the agenda of, of CEOs, boards, regulators. Yeah. Um, uh, and of course, you can't get away from talking about sovereignty in EMEA. No, yeah. I, I, exactly. So uh, let, let's dig a little bit into sovereignty. Like, how do you read... How do you read that challenge in the conversations you're having? Because obviously, from a cloud perspective, and I, I used to work at uh, BP, um, and this was we, we we had sovereignty issues with a lot of our data. You know, a lot, a lot of data is actually you know it's nationally owned, nationally owned resources. So we used to have to wrestle with it quite a bit, and it felt like and this was maybe ten years ago where we were doing our large scale move to the Amazon platform, and. We managed to we managed to um, sort of you know create landing zones, use geographical dispersion of the data, and and deal with it and deal with it reasonably well. But but the the conversation hasn't gone away. So what's been missing in in how people have been thinking about it and dealing with it in your mind? And what do you think the next steps are to sort of really nail it as a as a yeah make the problem go away? We've resolved it. Yeah. No. Look, I think at the heart of everything. Is um, is of course data sovereignty, and we we we've, we've just built AWS by design sovereign. Yeah, we were one of the only hyperscalers who set up our regions in a way that data cannot be moved across. So unless a customer actually tells us to do it, mm -hmm. the data is stored in the locality that you have. And as you saw today, we have incredible uh, scale and breadth and depth of our regions, which allow you to actually host data in the UAE as an example, right, or right. Spain for that matter as an example. And that is of course supported by things like our dedicated local zones that we announced recently, by the way. It's a way for people to be able to have the cloud benefits in their own data center through a DLZ. Mm. We've had Outpost technology for a while, which you can also leverage to store certain data that you want to keep it in a private environment, but you're still benefiting from the cloud, right? Right. So there are lots of different ways that you can 
ensure that you know very highly regulated workloads and data are continue to be maintained in a private scenario, but you're still benefiting from the security and scalability and agility of the cloud. We recently announced um, the AWS European Sovereign Region. Yeah, right. And the reason we did that is, and this is going to your question, there's development in the regulations around having um, you know, EU residents operate uh, the data center, mm. right? So mm -hmm. this will be an independent region. We're going to first launch it in Germany. Uh, interesting. Um, and, and it will be operated by AWS employees in the EU, located in the EU. Interesting. Um, and so that creates an additional yeah. layer, additional let's call it. Factor. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we're aiming to do is, you know, we're aiming to ensure that all the security that you already get mm. continues. You have full fidelity of services of the cloud. We don't want you to give you a limited cloud. Right. But we are also layering now with European Sovereign Cloud the ability to have an independent region mm. I think, um, in I think Europe. Sorry. What I see in Europe is the regulators are coming down to be more cloudified and understanding cloud. And you, what you're talking about is coming to meet the regulation as well. And there's this happy point in the middle. And it feels like we're almost at that tipping point that says we're ready to go. So the conversations for me are starting to move from should we go to cloud is now how do we go to cloud and that's been the last 12 18 months there's been this maturity cycle that's kicked in that's allowed the conversation to move on especially in the EMEA region and people there's a lot more excitement around cloud and the potentials there so hopefully see a massive uptick in uh, consumption soon well i you know i think the pandemic for all the reasons we didn't love it mm. yeah. actually really accelerated the journey to adoption of cloud no, no doubt. i mean as you all no know doubt. and you know and i think we're benefiting from the hybrid working in terms of diversity and inclusion. There's yeah. so many benefits that came from it, right? Uh, and of course, uh, it was a very unfortunate time in our history as well. But I think that already pushed things forward yeah, massively. Yeah. And now I, I do think it's no longer why cloud, but the how, as you say, and the roadmap yeah. and the migration plans. And that's what we're leaning into with our customers is, how do you migrate? What skills do you need? You know, which workload first? Where do you put that workload? Where do you put a different workload? Yeah, it's good to see. I, I think as the world gets to be a more complex place politically and a more complex place just generally at the moment, having a depth of solution in the way you describe, I think, is, is reassuring as much as anything else. Yeah, I heard lots of clients asking for um, let, them, let their clouds be managed and operated from a European location. So that's a an answer to a lot of questions, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And look, today I'll tell you, I think, you know, just given how many um, regions we've deployed um, in Europe and globally, they only have the benefit of low latency access close to them in their cities, you know, for example, where we do local zones. But now you've got the, you know, independent yeah. European cloud. Very good. And, and Shalk, the... The sovereign cloud, I think, is a theme at the conference. What other what other themes have you picked up between, uh, you know, our last episode and now? Oh yeah, I want to dive a bit more into the Gen AI part because I have some really, really good, good announcements here. Sure. About Amazon Q, I am really excited about those forty plus building connectors with um, third party services, like for instance with Salesforce, but also with Gmail, ServiceNow, and you're going to be excited about this as well with Slack. <laughs> it's about time. And like, have they done it with Teams? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, like, I'm a, I, have a passion, I have a passion point for Slack. You know, like, I, just personal view. Personal view, Rob. What about you? Uh, well, it's important that we can disagree and move on, Dave. You can introduce balance. You can introduce balance. <laughs> yeah, balance to the force. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I have a, I have a, a couple of more. Also, agents for Amazon Bedrock is now yes. general available. So um, you can easily build Gen AI applications uh, with, with agents much faster, orchestrating multiple steps. That's going to be a huge game changer. And the guardrails for Amazon Bedrock, mm. also a good release. Very important too. thing in yeah. AI, isn't it? The guardrails to yeah, keep it. To, to create safe interactions. Yeah, yeah. So those were the highlights for me. And could I add two more that I thought, but, yeah? and those are spot on, but I'm super excited about Q. Like, I need to like go start using it right away. Yeah. Um, but I was very excited about our announcements on the silicon infrastructure oh, yes. with the next generation of Tranium 
um, our relationship yeah. with NVIDIA yeah. and the next thing we're going to do there because you can't do generative AI unless you have the best performance, lowest cost infrastructure. And I think it's brilliant to see what we're doing there. Plus, of course, the continued expansion on our Code Whisperer and you know, making that really uh, available to people in a way that they can, in fact, be way more productive and more accurate and faster in terms of the way that they're building their software and their platform. Yeah. So I thought those two were really, really good as well. And great yeah. to hear from our customers on how they're leveraging and using generative AI to transform their customer experiences. Very much so. So look, um, we'll keep on tracking that over the course of the next few days. Any snippets, Tanuja, about what we might see over the next couple of days? <laughs> Oh my goodness, I don't have the inside track, I don't know. <laughs> but I think what we will continue to see is, because um, you're going to hear from Ruba tomorrow, you're going to hear, I believe, from Werner tomorrow as well. Right. Always fun. Yeah, yeah. Always yes. don't miss it. And Ruba will really be talking a lot about how we're leveraging the talent and capability and capacity of our partners, right? I mean, right. Um, all of the work that we do with our customers involves a partner in some form, whether they're ISV partners of ours, uh, SI partners of ours, right, like yourself. I mean, we really believe in this concept of the power of three and yep. bringing, bringing all of that ecosystem together. And I think that's, for our customers, that's highly, highly, highly powerful and visible, right? So I think you'll come on to that. Um, more on sustainability. By the way, I mean, th this is something that I don't know if people realize, but our commitment to power, uh, 100% of our operations with renewable energy by 2025. Yeah, that's, that a, big, that's a, a big commit. That is a, a big commit. That's a big deal, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're able to really leverage, you know, the power of reducing your emissions by moving from on-prem to... Uh, so literally. I, I think sometimes, you know, when people say, how do I address sustainability? Move to the cloud. Yeah. It's yeah. a great first step. It doesn't solve all problems, but it does. And then the point that Adam made around skills, you know, mm. um, the fact that we've trained 21 million people to date. So, you know, I just think that these, these are purposeful and important things. And uh, I'm certainly super proud that we are not only talking about technology alone, yeah. but how technology changes how, lives. How it impacts and moves around. Well, so fabulous. What a great note to end on. Uh, thank you so much for making time for us in your busy schedule today. It was great talking to you. Thank you very much for having me. And before we end, we end every episode of this podcast by asking our guest what they're excited about doing next. So obviously we're in Vegas. So Tanuja, what are you excited about doing next in Vegas? <laughs> well, look, um, I, I, you, know, you know, there is um, tomorrow evening, actually, I have all of my EMEA customers. Uh, at a reception that we're hosting oh, nice. and I cannot wait to meet all of them and of course my teams who have all come together for this so yeah that's what's exciting and of course Ruba's keynote I'm looking forward to that brilliant well look wish you a successful week um, fantastic um, set of things coming up and lots of interesting events and before we go you also have your own podcast, I believe. Like <laughs> I do. Thank AWS you. Conversations with Leaders. I do. I actually have two podcasts. Two? Yes. Well, that's just know. being greedy now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> AWS Conversations with Leaders. We had actually launched this year, and it's it's fantastic. I speak to CEOs about really how they're driving transformation and change, and yeah. it, it's been a, it's been fun. I've taped two here while I'm here. And then the other one I have been doing, which is more of a labor of love, is uh, since 2013. I have a a Power Women Network, and I have a network with senior women on oh, their journey cool. and uh, experiences, and it's called Power Women Speak. So, yeah, those Brilliant. two. Uh, what I mean, great, I mean, amazing subjects. Those those things we on on our on our normal show uh, explore very similar themes, actually. And I think the I think transformational theme and the the human at the middle of the transformation, I, I find like endlessly fascinating. So we'll certainly be giving those a listen. Thank you. I look forward to listening as well. And thanks for having me. Hey, our pleasure. So a huge thanks to our guest this week, Tanuja. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks also to our sound and editing wizards, Ben and Louis, our producer, Marcel, and of course, to all of our listeners. We're on LinkedIn and X, Dave Chapman, Rob Kernahan, and Xiao Kizal. Feel free to follow or connect with us. And please get in touch if you have any comments or ideas for the show. And of course, if you haven't already done that, rate and subscribe to our podcast see you back in the aws reality soon <laughs> <laughs>